I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making meatballs. So Chef Frank, what are meatballs? Great question. <laughs> um, you may have seen me in other videos make meatballs and I grind my own meat and they're really fancy. Uh, this is a version of meatballs that I pretty much do all the time for my family. Uh, they're simple, they're quick, they're easy, they're all those things, but they're also really tasty um, and kind of closer to what I grew up eating. I'm gonna make these meatballs in uh, tomato sauce uh, just like we used to have, but for the most part in Italy, they would eat these meatballs as a meat dish, not with pasta. And in America, we eat this with pasta. So I'm gonna do the American way. Uh, let's talk about the ingredients. I have about a pound and a half of beef ground up, a pound and a half of pork ground up, a pound of ground veal, about one and a half to two cups of grated pecorino. You could substitute Parmesan if you want. I just happen to like pecorino a little bit better. About three cups of plain breadcrumbs, no seasoning in the breadcrumbs. I don't want any sort of Italian seasonings in this. Four eggs, about four cloves of garlic chopped, salt and pepper. Meatballs are a way to stretch meat. And when people didn't have a lot of money to, for meat, they would stretch it out with day old bread. Right? Take the day old bread. A lot of times they'd soak it in milk or water, squeeze it out. We use breadcrumbs nowadays. Uh, I also use cheese, which is a little fancier. I think the cheese adds a lot of flavor. Uh, the breadcrumbs, the eggs, and the cheese also make these more tender. When I make meatballs, I like to cook them in tomato sauce. So it's kind of part of my Italian American heritage. This is what I have for my tomato sauce. Three cans of ground peeled tomatoes. I don't like peel or skin in my tomato sauce. About two to three small onions, diced or chopped fine, chopped garlic, about seven to eight cloves, one can of tomato paste, olive oil. And again, this is by eye. I use, this is about half a cup or three quarters of a cup. I'll probably use it all because I'm gonna fry my meatballs before I put them in the tomato sauce. And then a can of water. Uh, and this is like the old uh, Italian grandmother thing. You wash the cans out with water. And I used to think that it was just my grandma being frugal, but you're gonna add the water to the sauce so that it has time to cook out. If you just add tomatoes and the paste, this sauce gets thick really fast and doesn't have time to cook out and kind of mellow. So you add a little water to the sauce to give it some time to cook out and mellow. Let's make the meatballs. I wear gloves for this because I mix them with my hands. Uh, there's a lot of people that feel like you shouldn't over mix meatballs and I agree with that. You shouldn't over mix them, but you should mix them well. And that's just the thing, right? Uh, we have a lot of ingredients here that are gonna keep our meatballs tender. So if you mix them well, it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna add all my meats, my pork, my veal, and my beef. Okay, I'm not gonna mix those up right now. Crack my eggs in. Actually, let me add my, um, let me add my breadcrumbs. Add my cheese, and it's really easy, you can see. You basically just dump everything in. My garlic, and now my eggs. Okay, I'm gonna add a fair amount of salt and pepper. Um, just doing this by eye. Salt, black pepper, plenty of black pepper, okay? And now you get in there with your hands and you start mixing, right? You gotta really get in there, start mixing everything together. So we're really gonna try and mix these well, right? If they fall out, grab it, you know, maybe get a bigger bowl, Frank, maybe. Or maybe I need a smaller bowl. Uh, but my mixture's not all that wet, it's fairly dry, and I'm just gonna keep working it until I see that the meats are incorporated and all the ingredients are incorporated. So here's the thing, right? I'm looking at my mixture, and it feels a little dry to me. So I'm gonna add another egg. So instead of four eggs, we're gonna add five. We gotta think on the fly sometimes, you know? Like, if it doesn't feel right, you should adjust, right? And that's what I did. So let's, we added an egg. I think that's a little better. Have a little more moisture in there. My meatballs are mixed really well, and this is what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna test it. Now, I don't think a lot of home cooks do this, but as chefs, we constantly are tasting things. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this 
and cook it off and see how it tastes. Do I need to adjust the seasoning? Uh, I added an egg to this, it needed a little moisture. Maybe it needs more salt, maybe it needs more pepper, maybe it needs more cheese. There's two ways you can do this. You can take a little and put it in a pan and fry it up, which is probably the easiest way to do it. The only problem I have with that is when you fry it up, you're browning it and uh, browning always makes ta things taste better, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it in a little uh, commercial pa plastic wrap and make like a mini sausage and then put it in some boiling water. I have a little piece of commercial plastic wrap. You can't use like saran wrap for this. You need the commercial stuff from the restaurant supply store. And I'm gonna take just a little piece of my meatball mixture and put it into this. I'm gonna roll it up into a cylinder. I'm gonna twist it and I'm gonna tie off the end. Tie off that end, twist this the opposite way and tie off this end. And this little packet, I'm just gonna put in some boiling water until it's cooked and taste it to make sure my seasoning is good. Meatball parcel is done. Let's take it out of the water. So it feels like it's cooked and all I really do is cut straight through here and we give it a taste. So this is to make sure that before I make all these meatballs that they're gonna taste good. Good thing I did, I think it needs a little more salt. Um, so I'm gonna add more salt and then I'm gonna roll my meatballs out. Next step is to make these into meatballs. And uh, the way that we do this, because I have a large amount, is with an ice cream scoop. This is a one ounce scoop. This is the size that I like for my meatballs. Um, it's not necessarily one ounce of meat, but it gives us a nice shape. I don't like oversized meatballs. A lot of people like really large ones like you know, tennis balls or baseballs. Uh, this is the size that my family likes. Uh, so what we do is we're gonna scoop all these out um, and not worry about the shape too much at this point, right? Uh, we'll come back and we'll roll these. So whenever we do stuff in commercial kitchens, uh, we kind of do everything in like a process. So first we scoop all the meatballs, right? And I'm just gonna get it in there. It's a little overfilled, right? Get it in there and just scoop them all out. Um, and I find this takes a fraction of the time. So this is how we do it professionally. Right, I wear gloves, it's just easier to clean up with the gloves. And I'm not too concerned about their shape right now because I'm gonna go back and reshape them later. Right, make them just a little bit bigger than a scoop. And these scoops are cheap, you can get one for like five bucks. Uh, I'm making about four pounds of meatballs and a large batch of sauce. Uh, and I always get laughed at by my wife and my kids because like there's only four of us in the house. Who are you cooking for? But I do feed a few people, you know, I, I feed my wife's parents. Uh, we put these in the freezer. Uh, they freeze really well in the sauce. Okay, I have a little piece. I'm still gonna make a little meatball. So that's it. You can see that our meatballs are kind of rough. So now all I really do is get them and kind of just even them out. I don't really care if they're a little rough looking. I kind of like uh, the rustic meatballs, they don't need to be perfectly round, right? At this point, I'm using gloves, but if you find that it's sticking to your hands, you can always just dip your hands in a little cold water. Um, and all I do is, I'm not really packing them, I'm just kind of shaping them lightly into the meatball shape. Good, all done, see that was really quick, and now we fry. At this point, we have two choices. We can fry our meatballs in a pan, or we can roast them in an oven, right? Uh, and I've done it both ways, and uh, had great results both ways. But I tend to think that when you fry them in a pan, uh, they get a nice brown caramelized outside and they taste a little bit better. So if you can do it in the pan, we just fry all the individual meatballs. We leave the oil in the pan. The oil kind of gets that flavor from the meatballs and all those little brown bits on the bottom. And I think that makes a better sauce. Now, if I'm in a pinch, I throw them in the oven. It's a lot quicker, a lot easier. Uh, and you just take all the juices that come out and put it into your sauce. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of my pan. And I have a large pan um, because this is gonna be a large amount of sauce. I'm making it for 50 people. <laughs> when my oil is hot and we put the meatballs in, they're gonna sizzle. Uh, if you hear a hissing sound and if you put too many meatballs in the pan, they're going to steam and I don't want them to steam. You can see a little smoke coming off. So let's throw these in there and you're gonna have to do these in batches. They take a little time, right? Uh, when you cook uh, good food, it usually takes a little time, okay? So I'm not gonna overcrowd my pan. Don't be afraid to use olive oil. That's what we want. We want that olive oil flavor in there and they're delicious. Put them in and just wait for them to fry. So you'll start to see them frying um, and the idea is to get brown, right? So you can see nice browning. We don't wanna brown them so much 
that they are really dark brown, but this is a perfect caramelization. But I just want a nice brown, and I try and get it on all sides, but I know that I'm not gonna necessarily get it on every side. So I try and do three or four sides and get them nice and brown. They're not gonna cook through right now. Uh, they're basically gonna finish cooking in the sauce. First batch looks like they're pretty much done. You can see, I'm kind of brown on all sides. If there's one side that's not brown, don't worry about it, but we're getting that nice caramelization on more than one side. I take them out and I put them onto my tray. And then I'm gonna start doing my next batch. Get my little taster. I'm gonna taste that one. Get them in. So it's gonna take me at least two or three batches to get them all brown. And this is how my grandmother used to do it, so. I think she would fry it in lard. Lard is delicious. The last meatballs are done. I'm just gonna take them out, put them in my tray. And again, these aren't fully cooked. They are just browned on the outside. I have all the stuff from my tomato sauce here. And if you look in the bottom, there's a little bit of brown bits in there. And that is flavor. I'm gonna add the rest of my oil. And then I'm gonna add my onions. I'm gonna let the onions cook for a second or two before I add my garlic because they just take longer to cook. My memories of uh, meatballs and tomato sauce from my grandmother, there was a, like a layer of oil on top. And I feel like that's kind of key to any sort of meat sauce. There should be some oil on top. I mean, you don't want it to be greasy, but that oil is something really nice to dip your bread into. Okay, let's let that cook out. Uh, I want to talk about basil really quick. I have a lot of basil. I like basil in my, in my sauce for my meatballs. Um, I have the leaves that I'm gonna put in later. I'll put those towards the end of cooking, right? Because I want it to have a nice fresh basil flavor. What I do with the stems is I tie them up with a little butcher's twine and I'm gonna let this cook for a long time in the sauce. This helps make the sauce slightly sweeter. I don't like to add sugar to my sauce, so adding basil, uh, adding onions and letting them cook makes your sauce just a little bit sweeter. Uh, cooking it for a long time uh, also makes it a little sweeter. So let me add my garlic. Now I let this garlic cook out, right? I don't want my sauce to be like super garlicky, like raw garlic. I want the garlic to cook out. Um, I want it to be a mellow garlic flavor, mellow onion flavor. Get a little brown. Ooh, it smells delicious. Smells delicious. Hit this with just a little bit of salt to draw out some of the moisture in the onions. So my onions are getting a little brown. My garlic's getting a little brown. I add my tomato paste. Tomato paste is gonna add a little depth and richness to our sauce. It's gonna thicken it just a little, and I'm just gonna fry this for a second or two. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. So you see it starts to kind of loosen up and not be lumpy. And once it's not lumpy like that, I'm gonna take the bulk of my tomatoes and they go right into the pot, okay? I'm gonna take my water and wash this out. Add that, okay? I'm gonna add one more can of water, okay? I think it needs it. I'm taking my basil stems, they're going in right now. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of salt right now. We might need more later, and I'm gonna hit it with a lot of black pepper. I always prefer fresh cracked black pepper. So I'm gonna give this a stir, and once it comes to a simmer, I'll add my meatballs. Our sauce has been on for about five, seven minutes and it came to a simmer. Um, and now I'm gonna add all my meatballs and let this cook for probably about 45 minutes to an hour. My meatballs have been on for about an hour, simmering away. Um, I like to stir it occasionally. Stuff gets on the side, you get all this stuff that kind of collects on the side. I like to scrape that off and put it back in my sauce, stir the sides um, and this is how I determine if this is done. First of all, I see a little oil on the top. I see that, see that my sauce has reduced and it's gotten thicker. I also taste, right? So let me give it a taste. So basically what happened was when we put it on, it had kind of a raw tomato flavor. Now it has kind of a deeper, richer tomato flavor. So mine took an hour. If you have a bigger pot, it might take longer. If you have a smaller pot, it might take shorter, but always go on taste, okay? What I like to do is at the end of the cooking process, add some of that basil that I, I saved. Uh, if there's small stems in there, I'm not worried about it. I give it a stir. And that's it. That is our meatballs all done. Let's taste. 
So I can feel the meatball has a little bit of spring to it. They're not um, like dense and heavy. They're fairly light because we have breadcrumbs and eggs and uh, cheese in there. Blow off. Mm. They're tender, they're meaty, they have great flavor. And look at them, just beautiful little babies. That's our meatballs. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notifications uh, when we have new videos out. We have merch, check out our merch down below. Uh, need salt t-shirts. Uh, I'd like to thank all our patrons on Patreon for supporting us. If you'd like to support us, check out the link below. We also have a P.O. box for mail correspondence. And that's it. I hope you enjoy my meatballs. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.